Ladies and gentlemen, welcome in. My name is Silent Mike. I'm a power lifter, strength and conditioning coach, gym owner, apparel designer, and I'm here to talk to you about the tier list, the ultimate tier list, the raw and filter tier list of cardiovascular exercises. Now, I know you guys want to get big, jacked, strong, ripped, tight, vascular, sweaty, dripping, hunk of sexy, but we don't want to die. And cardio helps you not die. So we're going to talk about it today. Now, when we're talking about purely losing weight, we're going to be talking about maybe strength and conditioning, uh, power sports, athletes, and then we're just going to talk about fun because the biggest thing that matters in our nutrition and our cardio or any workout plan or regimen is that we can stay consistent. And a biggest key of having consistency is having a little bit of fun, having a plan. Number one on the list, swimming. I ain't Michael Phelps. In the scale of things, I'm actually built the exact opposite that Michael Phelps. He's probably got a huge dong. He's tall, very lanky. He's got webbed feet, large hands, and I think he enjoys marijuana at frat parties in between winning gold medals. I don't swim. I can. I'm elegant. I'm graceful. I'm an athlete. But in terms of this cardio world, not really my gig. If you enjoy it, by all means. I actually think for all factors, bodybuilding, strength and conditioning, and just having fun, it's actually one of the most underrated options. Um, it's very low impact, easy on the joints. Uh, if you're out of shape, injured, overweight, or if you're fit, you can still get a quality workout from that. We're gonna dump it up actually, starting off with a bang in the A tier. Little side note, if we're trying to burn calories, we're just trying to get leaner, number one's gonna come from nutrition. You're gonna burn way less calories doing any kind of exercise than you think you are. 30 minutes going pretty ham on almost anything, you're gonna burn anywhere from 200 to 500 calories. So if you're really trying to lean up, it's all gonna come from nutrition. Now this can complement and supplement that with extra calorie burn, but our overall day's calories are neat. Our non-exercise calories activity is gonna be bigger. How much are we walking? How much are we standing? Um, little things like that play a bigger role because those are like 16, 18 hours of our day versus 20 minutes walking on a treadmill. Number two, the skier. Now the first time I've seen these for a long time, I've worked with the CrossFit community over 10 years, um, helping them with some strength conditioning, worked with Reebok and been around, the, been to the games, et cetera, et cetera, not as an athlete. So I've seen these for a very long time, but the first one I actually used was with Tim Kennedy. We were just in Te Austin, Texas, and we went through a crazy killer, thousand mic killer workout with him, uh, and we used it. My abs were crushed, and because I'm freaking cranking on this thing. It's really hard. It's actually kind of fun. It's way different. Obviously, most cardio, when we think about it, is lower body based. This one is upper body based. So I think for um, a lot of people, it's a great switch up. Um, so I'm going to throw it in the B tier. Playing sports. We got a bunch of balls. If we're talking the fun factor, the balls are definitely an S. Uh, I hate running. I hate cardio. I'm, I'm slowly forcing myself to enjoy it lately. Playing sports, I used to play basketball for six hours straight and not even blink an eye. Uh, when I'm chasing something and, and have a goal, it's so much more fun. But when we're talking about strength sports, powerlifting, weightlifting, or we're talking about bodybuilding, building the best, best physique aesthetics we can, sports are probably too fatiguing um, to be in the S tier. So for the fun, it's definitely S. If we're talking about overall, you know, kind of aesthetics, bodybuilding, power building, whatever your goals are, sadly, I love sports. It's gonna go in the D tier. The localized fatigue, how tired you're gonna be from those sports will take away from your um, future training sessions. And to maintain as much muscle as we can while we're cutting uh, or while we're trying to gain uh, weight and muscle, we have to put that energy into the lifts that we're doing. Next, probably same thing, sprints. Athletically, great movement. And you would think it would tie in with strength sports, but the truth is it's just too much fatigue localized on your legs, depending on the sprint you do. Yes, sprinters, especially at the top level, are jacked, and, and they obviously sprint a lot and lift a lot of weights, but their performance in the gym is purely to complement their running, not the opposite way around. Sprinting doesn't really complement your lifting the same way, because sprinting has to be all out for it to be accessible. Whether you're talking about HIT, high intensity interval training, where you're doing sprints on time, or just any all out explosive movement, that's what a sprint is, that you're going 100 plus percent. Um, and that is the goal, and that is the stimulus that you have to input, but again, it'll take away from the rest of what we're doing. So in terms of fun, it can be a lot of fun doing hill sprints, uh, sled sprints, racing, et cetera, et cetera. But for our ultimate goal, it's probably gonna go down in the C tier. But if your number one goal is to have the sickest physique or be the strongest power lifter or weight lifter, sprints I would utilize very minimally. And if you do, you have to program them in perfectly. Walking, probably the most underrated exercise on the entire freaking planet. You can walk obviously a little bit faster than your strolling 
picking roses. Um, but that's easily gonna be our first S tier. Not always the most fun thing in the world, you know, and you see all these bodybuilders walking on an incline on a treadmill. But if you get outdoors, get a little bit of vitamin D, people watch, walk to a destination. That's why I ride my bicycle as my main transportation when I can, when the weather's good. Bicycling, probably gonna throw in the S tier too. Um, it's a, such a it's such an underutilized tool. You can obviously do sprints on it and start to push yourself a little bit. Um, I did 10 miles in about 40 minutes the other day and I was pushing pretty hard against some wind. Um, that's a pretty high calorie burn for one, for my dieting. And then two, uh, you can also just cruise and turn it more into a leisurely thing so you can have some fun. Again, having a destination helps a lot. Rowing, we just did a McGregor documentary episode on my podcast so 50 percent facts if you guys are into podcasts we drop two a week um we do movie reviews we talk hot topics in life aliens and also uh powerlifting and sports but we talked about mcgregor's new documentary where he's rowing like a mother on that thing and i've actually gotten a lot more into it now as i'm layering it with my assault bike twice a week i'll do some kind of metabolic conditioning something from 20 to 30 minutes that i'm pushing a little bit more um, you know, in the 78, 78 RPE scale, I'm not sprinting, but I'm not just going for a bike or walk. Um, and the rower has been a big piece of that for me. Doing stuff uh, like a rower or a swim may be a great piece to add in. Next overall, just hit. I'm gonna throw these in F just because we're talking about a category. Nothing in itself is magical. It has a big clickbait buzzword cliche. Is interval training great? It can be. Are sprints great? They definitely can be, but it all depends on how you utilize it, how you program it. I'm gonna do the same with lists, just because it's this category of buzzword. Low intensity, steady state cardio just means things that you can do um, while you're doing them, you can basically talk like I'm talking, maybe it's slightly more, but you're not heavy breathing. Something like a, a, a high intensity sprint, or any type of sprint at all, if at the end of it, you should not be able to speak an easy sentence, and while you're doing it, there's no way you can talk. Imam workouts. Uh, on the fun scale, something like that is great. That's kind of what I've been doing on my on my twice a week. With I uh, try to grab some of the guys from the gym at Third Street and have some fun every minute on the minute. So you have an exercise, a set, a rep, or a couple exercises that every minute you start a clock. Every minute hits, you'll do some. So it could be something like five calories on the assault bike, four med ball tosses, and four toes to bar, or something of that nature. And you're gonna do. Um, I guess a super set for my bros out there, three exercises in a row, and then whatever's left in that minute, you get to rest, and then the next minute hits, you do it again. Again, on the fun scale, it's great. For purely hypertrophy, bodybuilding, aesthetics, and body, uh, powerlifting, it's probably nothing that special. Although it is a tool you should have in your tool bag, we'll throw it in the C tier. Number one, my new best friend, the assault bike, the spin bike, the fan bike, the old school bike, whatever you want to call it. I do think actually, for multiple reasons, this is probably one of the best tools you can have. I'm throwing it in the S tier. You can ride nice and slow. It still has some resistance. So for warming up like squats and deads, I think it's superior to walking and even bicycling just based on like the, the strength curve and the profile of it while you're pressing it. It really does get blood into your legs well. Um, sprints on it are hell. Uh, moderate rides on it, hell. Uh, low intensity rides on it, hell. It's a really good piece. Jacob's Ladder. So it's basically a revolving stairs of wood planks that you use both your hands and feet to climb a ladder. Um, I'd seen it in gyms for the last 10 years. It's obviously gotten a lot more popular lately. Again, something I've never actually used myself. I might've played on it, but I never like really did a workout on it till we were with Tim Kennedy. Um, I blacked out by the time I was on it at that place. So I don't really know how I felt. Uh, it was very difficult. Uh, it's a great piece. Again, it's something you could probably utilize both low intensities, moderate and more sprints on it once you get more coordinated. If our pure goals are bodybuilding, power building, or powerlifting, strongman weightlifting, it's probably not on the top of my list. We'll throw it in C. Last but not least, this is my personal opinion. I don't care about the rest of it. Running. Running is so stupid. I don't care if it's trendy online. I don't give a F if that's what your favorite influencer is doing all of a sudden. I don't even understand it. I understand this mental toughness everyone's trying to go through. I hate running. I've never liked running. It's not for me. It might be for you. I won't judge you, but I won't be your friend. Running's going in the F tier. Ladies and gentlemen, the official cardio ultimate, the only cardio tier list you need on the internet. Share it with your friends, man. New content every single day. 3sb.co for all your gear. Appreciate all the support on our birthday sale. We got a brand new launch coming very, very soon. So stay tapped in. Goodcompanydiscord.com if you want to join the community. Uh, exclusives, discounts, and you get first dibs on all launches. So if you've missed something in the past that's sold out, it's because you're not in Discord. Get there. Goodcompanydiscord.com. I'm Silent Mike. 
Third Street Barbell. Check us out, Sacramento, California. Appreciate you guys so, so much. I and mean, then we'll catch you in the next one. Stop running, get fit, and stop saying cardio is stupid because we're all gonna die. Let's die a little healthier at least or a little bit later in life. Do some cardio for you, your loved ones. Um, I appreciate you being a part of something bigger than yourself, community and culture. Salam we're out.